Correctness follows from expressiveness. What do I mean by that? Consider you have a vector xs of numbers and want another vector ys containing the values of xs squared. This simply means applying the function square to every element. You would loop over it, sure. Nobody in his right mind would do it using go-tos, but let's do it anyway for once just to bath in the harmfulness. But first, let's write down some boilerplate code. We include some headers, add a typedef for a vector of integers, and write out our square function we want to use. Ok, now to the go-to-based implementation. Yeah, this is terrible. One cannot see what is happening until one reads through all the mess. A while loop would be a bit better. but the for loop would generally be preferred. Just by looking at the loop header, one can see immediately that the code iterates over all elements. A look in the body is not needed. Or is it? There could be some hidden iterator manipulation happening. In this short example, one could spot it at first glance. But the loop body could be much larger and then one would not know for sure if the result is guaranteed to even have the same number of elements as the input. Luckily, since C11 we have range-based for loops. They are much better. This is nice, because we do not have to deal with iterators anymore. Many people stop here, but still, there could be a hidden continue or something in the loop body. So, can we push this principle of maximizing clarity even further? It turns out we can. The STL provides STD transform. In other languages it is called map, but in C++ the name map is used for dictionaries, so it is named transform. Anyway, using it gives us all the guarantees we were missing before. But now we are back to dealing with iterators. So how could a maximally readable code look like? This looks very good but we do not have transform vec yet, so let's implement it. It is a bit more work in the first place, but now we have a function that we can use over and over again, no matter if we want to square the values or do something completely different to them. Transform vec nicely shows how we use functions as data. Its first parameter is the function we want to apply to every element. By the way, functions that take another function as a parameter or return a function are called higher order functions. So transform vec, like std transform before, is a higher order function. We will see and use many of these in the future. Since transform vec is a function template, it is generic enough to deal not only with integer vectors, but with vectors of all kinds of objects. Of course, it does not matter at all how we implement this function internally. I used std transform here, but range-based for loop or even the go-to version would equally work, since the interface for the user would stay the same. If the used function mapped over the values now returns a type different from its input, we would have to explicitly name the output type or deduce it from the function using std result of. If you want to do this on your own, go ahead. It is not that difficult. But do not dive too deep into metaprogramming here. We can use fplus transform from the functional plus library that does exactly that. Additionally, it also allows to not only use vectors, but also lists, double ended queues, or anything else implementing the STL sequence container interface. When you would continue to push this principle and write your own function templates for all the stuff you do not want to type over and over again, you perhaps would invent something like functional plus on your own. At least this is how I came to write it. But what about the runtime performance? Can our comfortably abstract version keep up with the low-level implementations? Let's find out. First we need a vector with some numbers to process. The actual content of the vector is not important for our little experiment. In order to measure the performance, we transform over our vector several times so that the program takes enough time for good measurements. One single run would simply be over too quickly. We compile with the maximum speed optimization level 03 and run our program with a stopwatch. 
Okay, is the range based for version equally fast as the go to version? Yes, it is. So, what about our code using F plus transform? Hooray, it has the same speed. Modern compilers do a very good job in really allowing abstractions without runtime overhead. Now, instead of transforming the values in a sequence, we could also want to keep only those having a specific property. For our toy example, let's pretend we want to keep only the even values from an integer vector. In functional programming, we again would use a function for this, like we used transform before. Functional plus provides keepif for this task. We call is even in this context a unary predicate. Unary because it takes one parameter and predicate because it returns a boolean. So keep if takes a unary predicate and a sequence and returns a sequence with only the elements from the original one fulfilling the predicate. Sure, we could also use a range based for loop for such a filter. It would look like this. But you see, the loop header does not tell if we are dealing with a transform, a keep if or something completely different. The version using keep if however does. So the code is more expressive and, with very little practice, quicker to understand. We do not need to read a loop body. Additionally, implementing this loop if logic over and over again in our code base with different containers and predicates would violate the DRI principle and bloat the source with code duplication. And, depending on how we implement, we could create errors. Have a look at this in-place version handling an STD list. Do you see the error? Here it is. The iterator is invalid after the call to erase. We have to set it to the return value. So, by using the more expressive functional version, we do not only gain readability, but also correctness. While implementing more complex algorithms with loops and ifs, you perhaps even have caught yourself using trial and error at some point to get it working correctly. Functional programming, on the other hand, forces us to think clearly. What is it that we actually want to do? Programming this way sometimes still is an art, but it is less tinkering and more engineering, since we compose simple basic building blocks. This also helps to not switch between levels of abstraction inside a single code block. You will be surprised how many programming solutions can be expressed by composing basics like transform and keep if. It's just another way of thinking. Later in this course we will develop functional solutions depicting this nicely. But we still need to learn some things before we can dive into these more complex exercises. Right now I suggest you solve the following one. Implement keep if on your own so it can be used as depicted. Don't forget to verify your implementation by testing it with some data. As a bonus you can try to make it work for different container types by adding another template parameter to your function template.